Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been a hot minute since you guys heard my voice. I've been kind of just mainly uploading funny clips and stuff like that recently. And I haven't really done any streaming. Um, but I thought uh, I would upload something like I did a couple times before with like my Dead Island review and things like that. And it's going to be, as the title says, a casual uh, Starfield review after getting the Platinum. Um, and to be honest with you, I didn't even think I was going to do it, f especially for this game. Because uh, I just played it. And then I completely forgot about it. Like I just did the one main playthrough. I didn't touch any of the uh, of the uh, new game plus mechanics or anything like that. Like I like the first Bethesda game that I just played and forgot about. And as you can see, the huge difference here, right? 09, 2023 to <laughs> this is the last achievement that I got, right? Reaching level 100. So we are talking months that I did not even think about this game. So, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting ride, Starfield. I, I don't know how I can quite put into words, so <laughs> this review might be a little bit harder, um, because as you guys, like people who've been subscribed to the channel for a little bit know that, uh, when I do reviews, it's more of a podcast, like a casual style review where I kind of just, I play the game in the background and I kind of just go over some talking points that I've, uh, I've kind of jotted down. Um, and as you can see, I am level 100. Um, and as well as you can see, I have the New Game Plus Starborn outfit. I will be getting into that a little bit later, and that that whole pain of going through 10 New Game Pluses. Um, and yeah, yeah, I got some weapons and things like that that aren't too bad throughout this playthrough so far. Um, kind of dabbling in the, um, what's it called? The uh, gunsmithing mechanics. Um, and as you saw earlier too, it's to reiterate, I did get all the achievements. I've 100 percent of the game of all the content. There might be like a quest or two that uh, that, I, uh, that I might have missed, like small quests that don't really matter. Um, but essentially, I pretty much covered everything in this game that I could reasonably cover. So we're just gonna, you know, play the game, talk about it, kind of give you my thoughts on it because Starfield is definitely a a weird Bethesda game in a sense of like, yeah, like even I jumped off the game after my main quest playthrough and didn't touch it until I think a couple weeks. I think it did take, I think about a week ago, a week and a half ago, I started playing the game again randomly, which is weird because we're sandwiched between some real heavy hitters. Like, I just finished up Final Fantasy, uh, the first part, and I got the second part right now on the go, which I'm actually gonna go back to play after, uh, after this review. Um, and then we got Dragon's Dogma 2. So we got a lot of, uh, we got a lot of games. Actually, you know what, I do need some iron. But I got an extensive list here. Um, I don't know how long this review is going to be. My reviews tend to last around about an hour or so. And I actually do kind of wish more reviewers did something like what I do right now because I like to uh, have YouTube videos up in the background while I like game. So that's why I kind of want to do my content like this where it's more easygoing. Um, not like up in your face like you have to pay attention to what's on the screen this is more just like you know what you're washing dishes you're 
playing a relaxing game. You kind of just want some background noise. That sort of thing, right? Give you some uh examples of late game combat, especially when you max out slow time like I have. The game does get pretty easy because of that. Really the only things that the only things that really do seem to kill me this uh this late into the game are probably high level turrets. For whatever reason, man, they do a lot of damage. Oh, I guess I can show you. And for whatever reason, too, the uh, Valrune guns are absolutely... Are absolutely broken. But with this one, I actually do have a uh, bleed effect on it and stuff like that, too. So even though the base gun is really good itself, upgraded... I got this busted Valrune one. Or Valrune, sorry. I don't think there's an L in that. <laughs> nice little bug there, too, for people to see. But uh, what's first up on the list? You know what? Actually, because I'm talking about New Game Plus, why don't we, uh. Why don't we start with New Game Pluses and things like that? Because I think the main story. Look at that. that was a, if I actually hit my targets, that's a three tap on a level 98 enemy. As you can see, how good this weapon is. Um, yeah, so we'll uh, we'll talk about New Game Plus because, like I said, the main story, which I will talk about in this review as well, at some point I have it down on my list, but. I think it's been kind of talked to death, and we all kind of know what the issues with the main quest are, but I think I would like to really start with the New Game Plus mechanics and how that plays, because it's actually the most recent thing that I have done. As you can see, having the uh, New Game Plus 10 Starborn outfit, which I do have to say is an absolute banger. That is the one thing I will say good about the New Game Plus 10 run is that, like, though it is so long, I mean, yeah, it is definitely the coolest armor in the game. But overall, if you're talking, besides just a cosmetic, I mean, yeah, the, um, the stats are also really, really good. It's actually some of the best stats. Um, in the game you can get i didn't get the best roll on it i mean that's one thing you can do with rushing the main story as a starborn is you keep re-rolling your um your outfit until you get stats that you want but i mean the bolstering is not too bad and the headhunter is not too bad and to be honest with you the game is just so easy you don't really need to uh min max your your stats so much in this game as long as you got some decent ballistic and like that protection, like you're fine. But diving into New Game Plus, as people know with how the main story operates, right? You go through the Unity, you jump into another universe, and you're reborn as a Starborn. I think that is a really cool mechanic that they have like actually integrated with the uh the story, right? Because most of the time it's just like New Game Plus is just, oh, play through the story again, right? So I really do like what Bethesda tried to go for here, where like they're actually introducing a mechanic that explains why you're doing New Game Plus. And, and you know what? And I did appreciate the uh, the unique Starborn dialogue that's in the game. But what really falls short with the mechanic is one the game doesn't reward you enough to justify you playing through this game 10 plus times right 
Because you're talking like each playthrough is about 30 to 40 hours. If you're actually playing through the game. Like how you would normally play with this game, right? Um, the game doesn't really justify that. Like, how I was told how to play this game and how what I ended up doing what I actually like is you do... You can do one, like your first playthrough is just like your playthrough, right? Your traditional Bethesda playthrough. And then to get the armor and the starboard ship, speed run through the game ten times, right? And then make that tenth playthrough your final, like your, your final playthrough, right? Make that your true new game plus. Um, some people disagree with that. Some people like to just run through, uh, what's it called? Run through the game 10 times right at the start and then make the final, uh, make the final playthrough your true playthrough. And that's also fine as well. Um, what I ended up doing was I did a main playthrough because Everyone kept telling me to rush through it and do an A plus, but I didn't really feel like doing that. So I did one main playthrough, and then I sped uh, through the base game uh, nine more times, right? To get to New Game Plus 10. And if you, once you get really efficient at it, it takes about 40 minutes, I want to say. 40 to 50 minutes to do a... Uh, a playthrough so give or take I was about it took me about like no that's not true actually because I think I it on the clock it said 20 hours or so didn't like that you know what it's probably about 30 to 40 minutes to get the artifacts and then probably another like 20 minutes or so to do like the actual final encounter at the uh at the fighting grounds. But it was... It was very long. It was very boring to do that, right? To do that nine times. Um, and I actually thought about giving up a few times, but the, uh, the prospect of one... It actually helped me level up a lot. As you can see... Before I started my new game plus run, I was at level 84 and I found the XP grind to be pretty bad at this point. But every time you did a run, you got, I think it was like 50,000 XP. So while I was doing the new game plus grind, I was also um, grinding towards the final achievement that I needed, right? Because before I stopped playing, I actually only had one achievement left, which was to reach level 100. Um, I think that's also what really drove me back to this game, because in recent months I've been kind of doing more 100% completions on games. And seeing that I had Starfield at 99%, I guess probably bugged me a lot more than it should have. Because I 100%ed all the other uh, Bethesda games, right? Like Fallout 76, Fallout 4. Skyrim, Oblivion, etc. Um, so just to have this game also under my belt as well. So when I started doing that, you know, I started kind of taking down points because I thought about, you know what, it'd be really nice to record a video and uh, do another platinum uh, platinum review. travel here so going back to new game plus the big issue that that game also runs into as well or this game runs into sorry is that though there are cool unique encounters at the lodge that's the only thing that's unique to game plus other than that it's just a few dialogue options during quest lines um, that don't really even do that much to be honest with you 
Like, you'll say some things that make it clearly obvious that you're a starborn, but because no one has that context, it's just kind of like, a, oh, you're kind of crazy, dude. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, you're what? Oh, oh what do you think this is? And that's really to the extent past the lodge encounters, right? So, why would you. I really wish Bethesda did was truly make each New Game Plus universe different. And it doesn't even have to be like a massive, massive difference. Like, it could be just small little things, right? And this goes without saying, too, as well, I guess, <laughs> even though it's 15 minutes into the video, um, spoilers, the game is months old. Also, I don't know why you'd be watching a review about a guy who 100% to the game. If you're gonna play the game anyways yourself, so. If you made it this far, I'm gonna be spoiling everything. Um, so yeah, but going to the encounters, there were really cool encounters. I think there's like 10 or something like that. We're like, yeah, like, uh, your character kills everybody or everybody in, uh, in the lodge is a version of you. So like, and, or like, there's one version where they're all dead and it's just a bunch of kids, right? And you're like the last member. So like, there's all these really cool little counters like that specifically tied to the lodge. But what Bethesda should have really done was expand that into the actual world itself too. Um, but also going on to the point of the small lodge encounters with my new game plus runs, I only got to see two of those. I had to watch a YouTube video to actually, <laughs> uh, to actually see the unique ones because it's all randomly generated, right? Which is unfortunate because what they should have done is just made every single new game plus a, uh, a specific one, right? And then once you get past the new game plus 10, right? Because that's when you get your final reward then make it randomly generated. Um, because once I got to New Game Plus 9, I was a little bit worried that, because uh, I did not want to keep running New Game Pluses, that I was going to have to do it again where like all the companions were dead or something like that, right? But luckily, again, for my seventh one, I got a normal world state. Um, but... Like I said, though, I just wish Bethesda took it farther. And that's kind of going to be a running theme with this whole review and pretty much just about Starfield in general is that like Bethesda has a lot of good ideas in the game, but whether it's budget constraints, time constraints, um, just a lack of focus or just even just wanting to like the drive to just want to do it. Um, there's just a lot of shortcomings when it comes to certain mechanics in this game. And if you're just looking at the... If you're looking at the... Uh, like the patch notes and stuff like that, a lot of them are just, they're just playing catch-up, right? Asking what people want in the game. And it's not even just like unique new thing. It's like it's really basic items in, uh, that should have been in the game at launch. You know, one thing that really pisses me off, oh, I don't want to say pisses me off, one thing that bugs me with every single Bethesda game, they do it every single time, is respecking. They know players are going to want to respec, but they never include respecking at launch. They always make it a DLC feature where you have to pay money to respec. And I don't know why they do that. Actually, wait, no, that's a lie. Fallout 76 uh, had it out. Did they have it launch? No! Follow 76 doesn't even... I think you're able to do it every... Fuck, I can't even remember now. It's either Fallout 76 had at launch, and it was like every 50 levels after... Or every 100 levels or something, you were able to change your special stats. Or it was after launch, they added it. It's one of the two. Actually, okay, don't quote me on Fallout 76. I actually can <laughs> confirm that. Um, 
But it's sad, right? Because, for example, I wish I didn't put all these skills into tech. Because I'm telling you right now, with how lackluster all this stuff is, I didn't need to put this in here at all. It would have been better if I put in something like Outpost Engineer if I want to make really cool bases. Or just maximize all the crit and stagger damage. Or be able to, like, really I should probably put this into commerce because to be able to buy stuff for cheaper, right? Or things like, you know, sprinting and stuff like that. Because I wasted, like, a good, like, 15 or so levels investing in ship stuff thinking that, oh, well, it's a space exploration game. <laughs> I better put my stuff in ship stuff because, you know, obviously it's going to be really important. But in reality, not really. You only need a couple perks, right? You, you just need the... The pilot perk and the um, starship crafting or engineering perk. Those are the only two perks you need in that skill. Sure, you can level up your uh, weapon damage and stuff like that in your ship parts if you really want to, like to maximize your TPS. But the thing is, with ship combat being so easy and straightforward, there's no need to really. Like, yeah, you'll save yourself like five or six seconds, but. It's just not worth a full level, in my opinion, right? Deep searching. Ooh, actually, this guy. That guy hurt me a little bit. Actually, here's a good question. I'm actually about to level up here too as well. I don't know if what's it called? I don't know if you get skill points after level 100. I got the impression that you didn't. I guess we'll see. Won't we? One thing too about these locations, I never know if like if I should be really going them over um, for resources and stuff like that. Cause I always find like I don't. I don't find a lot of stuff in them. Like sure, the odd part or so. But I find resource gathering in this game tends to be a lot more of a pain in the ass than compared to Fallout 4, which is actually another point too as well I'll get to later on about outpost building and how um, it's a lot better. Obviously it's improved upon from Fallout 4 and 76, but in terms of like resource management and things like that, I feel like it's a step back. We got here but you know what I mean like that's all I got for this base <laughs> you know what I, mean? I think that the uh, I'll talk about that later probably too as well but how exploration with like all these prefab locations and stuff like that and how it's just so I don't know, just, it was the wrong call. It was the wrong call. But I think that's probably it about New Game Plus. I rambled on a little bit. I think I rambled enough about that subject. Just pretty much long short of it, like, they should have done more with it. Expanded upon it in the actual state of the galaxy. Um, instead of it just being pretty much isolated to the first time you walk through the lodge, right? Um, what else do I got on this list here? You know what? Now that we talked about New Game Plus, let's, let's actually just get through the main story issue. I know other people have brought this up, and I'll also bring it up too as well here. It is so mediocre, 
and it's also a really dumb idea. Oh, these are just completed. Okay. Hmm. I think that's a bug because that should be incompleted. Oh, you know what we'll do actually too for this? I'll, I actually have to get the uh, the Vanguard auto cannons for my ship. Or you know what? I'm gonna put a bigger grab or generator on my ship first though. Um, they set, for the main story, they set the game after all the cool things, right? Like the, the war. Like you're talking about a war that had, you know, like Xeno warfare. It had giant mechs and like they're painting like these absolute bloodbaths, right? Fighting for these planets. And the game, and Bethesda thought it was better just to be like, oh, hey guys, um, you know this really cool event that would have been really fun to play through, and you, you know, that could be a storyline, right? Picking either the United Colonies or uh, this Free Space Collective. No, they just give you a quick, you know, 10 minute tour telling you about all this cool stuff that you just missed, <laughs> right? So. Instead of getting something like that, where, like, I mean, yeah, it's kind of dabbling onto, like, the whole, like, Skyrim conflict kind of setup and stuff like that. But, like, being able to fight for planets and, like, have the galaxy change drastically throughout the conflict, right? You know, being ambushed when you're flying, having all these awesome dogfights and stuff like that. They thought it was just better to not do that. And it's, it's sad because... All that the main story ends up being is just, you know, a long series of, uh, of fetch quest. And it's, it's lame because this is probably by far the worst main story in a Bethesda game. Because 90% of the quest are, uh, Well, they're just, they're especially, you're just gathering artifacts, right? And there are a few good ones sprinkled in there. But for a AAA developer, for what we actually got in this game, and what the world sets up, like I said before, with all the cool stuff that we missed, it's just, it's just disappointing, right? But in an okay, you talk about, you know, you don't play Bethesda games for the main story, right? You play them for the uh, power generated for the uh oh. Oh, wait, I think I do this, right? Put the grab drive there, and then put the reactor there. So I get a lot more power. Uh oh, you know what? Let's cancel the modifications here. Best grab drive. Oh, yeah, the best grab drive for 
I don't need a big ass graph drive like that though. I just need a better reactor. That brings up to 79. So that gives me 40, right? Put power. Wait, some cancel modifications. Fuck, is it even worth doing that to be honest with you? Because it just looks ugly for that one extra power. And you know what? This looks cleaner like this. Also. Oh yeah, I can't even change the power of that. All right, well, sorry, that was just kind of a waste of time there. Um, but, oh, you know what? No, let's, uh, we talk about uh, shipbuilding, right? So the one thing about shipbuilding in this game is that it's actually very deep. It is very in depth. And the amount of crazy shit that you see being built, like you see people making like, uh, uh, Star Wars, like, Imperial destroyers or like halo pelicans, right? Like it is a very deep deep System and I really appreciate that because it's definitely Starfield's biggest um, Strong point right and the only real criticism I have with the star or the shipbuilding system is that you can't tour the inside right because when you're talking about um, trying to build Habs and stuff like that, right? Where they have different workbenches. They don't tell you which benches are in, right? Like, they don't give you anything in terms of the description. Like, you pretty much have to do trial and error or look up, or at launch, I guess it was trial and error. But now you could probably look online to see which um, hab has what workbench and how it's connected and stuff like that. Because when you're trying to build a ship and you're trying to connect all these halves, you can get some weird, like, twists and turns and some, like, really horrible interior design ships. Even though the outside can look like something like this, but the inside is just so horrendous. And one thing that would really help that is just that if Bethesda gave the option to preview, you know, a walkthrough of your ship, right? Um, before you commit to something. Because shipbuilding is really expensive. Um, you're talking like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of credits, right? Right. Sometimes you can even build like a million dollar ship. So to be able to actually see how the layout is, where things are placed, it would just be a huge boon to the game. And you know what? Maybe they might do that in one of their, uh, their content updates. Um, we'll have to see. But now the negative part with shipbuilding and stuff like that too as well is that it's pointless. <laughs> like if you want to talk about exploration and things like that in space with your ship there's none of it like this right here is 99% a fast travel mechanic you're not flying around like no man's sky right where you have this absolute free will to just cruise around the galaxy right you're essentially as I will show you right now <laughs> you're just pulling up your map B, B. Uh, we're going to go back to, uh, what the hell is that place called? Uh, where the UC is, anyways, okay? I don't know why I can't think of the name right now. 
the hell is that place called? Jesus Christ. New Atlantis. I can't even remember what the fucking place was called. And that's your fly. Right? So, yes, you can make an awesome ship. And you can make a super deadly ship where it does an insane amount of damage. But truth be told, ship combat makes a very, very tiny percentage of the gameplay and quests and things like that. You're mainly just using it to fast travel, right? So just upgrade your max, your fuel and your grab drive and you're pretty much good to go. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And this game being 30 frames per second on consoles is also just disgusting. So that's the, and so that's the so that's the two things right about it. it's like yeah it's it's really deep and it's really fun to build ships but then there's also no point to it as well right so hopefully maybe with DLC or things like that they kind of put more emphasis on ship combat they can't really change the exploration element because that means just completely overhauling the game which I doubt they're going to do, but they did say new ways of traveling. Hey, Sarah's friend. So I don't know what that really entails. If they're going to be adding like land-based vehicles, and that's why like, people have been asking for you know land-based vehicles, but <laughs> there's no point of exploring a planet either if you want to go into explorations on planets because it's it's all barren. It's just you know it's a barren landscape. It's flat and they dot, you know, like five or six prefab locations with randomly placed enemy types, right? And that's your planet exploration. It's what, but what they should have done is that it should have been a small cluster of stars where they were handcrafted. I would have taken that a hundred percent over. I'm here all day if you've got something else on your mind. Um, well, all right. Take the elevator down to the Vanguard Orientation Hall. You can get, and if you've got any questions, um, that's I I would have taken that one hundred percent. Because you look at look at something like take the concept of the Outer Worlds, right? That game was a massive victim to budget cuts, right? And I do hope the sequel is, is better because I actually did enjoy Outer Worlds, even with the shortcomings. But if you were to take that concept of like just instead of it just being a single cluster and like how it was in Outer Worlds, make it a series of like locations throughout like again like a, a I don't know make it like five or six systems, and I think you just have a better experience overall. Oh yeah, I do have a bounty because I murdered a couple people. <laughs> Registration accepted. You may now proceed through the historical displays in the orientation hall, or continue on to the examination. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, we're just going to skip all this. Oh, well, actually, you know what? Funny enough, remember I was talking about, like, you miss all the cool parts? Yeah. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh. Is, uh. All the stuff that you miss, right? So it's 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 annoying, right? And for example, even just like this, the terror morse or whatever. There was a cool event where like these things like overran a city. That would be such a cool mission where like you're panicking, like this random attacks happening. You have to like. It's almost like a survival horror realm of you trying One to escape the city. The Terramorphs can control people's minds. But that can't be true. 
Right, so it's just... It's, it, it's sad, right? With, like, all the possibilities that they could have done, they decided to do this. It's almost like taking the easy way out, almost. Sorry guys, just one second here, just checking up on something. Um Yeah, sorry guys. Just, yeah, that's just the one thing about doing this more live content is <laughs> sometimes shit just happens. This is the Mark 18 flight simulation chamber applicant. Currently in orbit around a high detail recreation of a remote world. Shut when you're up. Ready to no. begin, please take a seat in the pilot's chair. Your exam is simple. Defeat as many tiers of opponents as you can before your ship is disabled. You must defeat at least three tiers of opponents to pass the exam. Good hunting, applicant. It's actually kind of funny too as well, where like targets Todd has come out saying that like this game was not fun <laughs> until like a year before release. So that's pretty bad. I don't even want to know what this uh Oh wow, there's actually a level 50 enemy. Probably should have been taking this a bit more serious. Seeing that we're doing um, a actual faction quest line, we can start talking about uh, New targets active. factions in this game, right? And that's also another just massive draw on Starfield. I might not be able to do this with this shit. <laughs> In destroyed right now. You know what? Because I'm too lazy to uh, do this again if I die. So again, behind them here.
I'm actually like really focused on not losing here. <laughs> Surprisingly. This was really easy when I did this last time. I can just leave those, right? I Congratulations, applicant. Yeah. You've defeated sufficient opponents to pass the exam. You may now exit the simulator through the hatch to record your current score, or stay and try your hand at the remaining tiers. And I have mixed feelings about the factions in this game. On one hand, the UC Vanguard is pretty good. It's not the best, but it's pretty good. Actually, you know what? No, this UC Vanguard is actually probably the best. The Three Star Rangers are not, it's not a bad quest line, but it's pretty straightforward and also pretty short. Then you have um, that Ryu and uh, uh, gov not government, uh, where that, that company fucking plays on Neon. That was just a horrible quest line. It's lo it's not too long, but it's also focused on stealth. And the problem is stealth in this game applicant. You've passed. is not that great. To Commander Tuala to receive your final and during those missions, there's not too many opportunities to even stealth, even though they're trying to get that to focus. And then as well, you have the pirates, right? And that quest line. And that one's actually pretty good. So you only really have two true faction quest lines that are decent length and are actually good quality. You have one that's all right but short, and then you have one that's just absolutely garbage, right? And if you're talking about a big open world RPG, only four faction quest lines, but in reality, make that two. And you can see where that becomes kind of a problem in terms of just being lacking in content, right? Well, look who's back. Everything go all right with the exam? Or did you? Ah, so these are your numbers. Oh, excuse me. So, looking at... Skip the murals all together, huh? Not that they're required or anything, but naturally inquisitive folk. Your physiological results are... Huh, that's odd. System couldn't get a read on you. Well, that's kind of cool. You get your kicks flying too close to stars? Because you're putting out some interesting radiation. Don't worry, though. It's not going to affect your score. But, uh, where were we? Oh, there you go. There's a little starborn dialogue now, for you. How'd you do against your foes? All right. Clear tier. Th we try to set a high bar. But that's no small feat. Nice work. So then, looking at your results as a whole, and presuming you're successful in completing your probationary mission... 10 year service. Better than your average lab rat or diplomat, but pretty. So, sounds to me like if you're interested, we could bring you on as a pro. Get you the credits you've earned, then. First, though, all UC service people. So, you want to make this a. I also love how you could. But there's this absolute refusal for you to be locked out of content. So, you could swear fealty to the UC and Freestar Collective. So that's, I always thought that's kind of funny, which is weird because in Morrowind, if you guys remember, if you played Morrowind, if you join a faction that is at odds with another faction or just groups of factions, they pretty much told you to piss off, right? But it's weird that, like, ever since Skyrim, I guess even technically Oblivion, too, Oblivion had it. Like, in Skyrim, too, it's like, you can be the leader of the Dark Brotherhood, you can be the leader of the College of Winterhold, you can be the leader of the Companions, and, like, Leader of the Thieves Guild. It's just, it's, it's weird. Just mull it over. I don't know. Fantastic. I, I hate that. There should be rewards for picking a play style and joining a specific group. But the problem with modern Bethesda games are is that their factions aren't deep enough to warrant that, right? There's, so, especially like the Thieves Guild from Skyrim and things like that, or the Brotherhood. Like it's just so surface level. It's not worth it making one specific character to that faction which is probably why they they don't do it where like you'll be locked out because 
that's pretty much just making the game shorter, right? When you're locked out of different factions. So they said it's better off for you just to be the leader of everything. Even though it's kind of ridiculous. But right, what well, we just uh, witnessed earlier a couple minutes ago, though, yeah, there's, so there's a unique piece of uh, Starborn dialogue, which was pretty cool. Would Fancy, be right yeah. doing this where we couldn't see the star Now, the motto of the Vanguard is Supra et Ultra. Above, that is where we serve. Beyond the, do you swear? And to uphold... All my actions, season. Then let me be the first. Now, only thing left is getting... And what I've got is comms repair. Group trying to refurb an old colony war processing plant on Tau City 2. Sounds like they barely got places as isolated as they come. So Brass wants a van. So, can the people up? Oh, that's it. Head down to the spaceport and talk to Crew Chief Haret. Oh, and give it your all out there. Give me my money. one thing too as well that's kind of bugged me about this game I didn't even write this point down but now that I'm just thinking about it is that I get that they wanted to do a grounded like sci-fi world but after games like Mass Effect and things like that it is just so boring that like all you're doing is you're just facing human enemies and robots and the odd uh, alien life forms, right? That are copy and pasted over a thousand planets. The Terramorphs, or the hell they're called, uh, those are really the only cool alien. It's the only cool alien race in this whole game. So they only have one. It's kind of a disappointment, right? Like you look at Mass Effect. I, I think Mass Effect hit. They they hit the nail right on the head. In terms of having it be grounded in legitimate science or theory of science, like, you know, the theory of it, I guess you should say. But also just have that fantasy element, right, with the Krogan and the Asari and the Turian and stuff like that, which just fleshed that world out and made it so interesting and awesome to explore, right? In this game, I know when I go to a planet, I'm either fighting aliens, or, sorry, not aliens, I'm either fighting human bandits raiders or I'm facing robots <laughs> so like it it dulls the uh, combat and exploration quite a bit ah you are new probationary then it's my job to make sure all you rocket jockeys are ready for it now manifest says we're fitting you out with one in addition to the standard issue welcome kit all probate Med packs, some small arms, couple spare ship parts, all the essentials. My people will have everything on your ship before. Hmm. So, paying a visit to the people. Nice easy one for your first job. Just any questions before you head? I honestly didn't realize it had people living on it until we got your record. Report they gave us seemed clean. No known hostile outposts. But I wouldn't say that's permission to let you. Just watch out for wildlife and pirates. Then I won't keep you. Make us look good out there. But, um, yeah, and going back to the, to, um, the factions, I think I've kind of said everything I want to say on factions. And I think it's been kind of talked to death too as well, just how lacking it is in this game. And I think uh, that's really just, like, the, the... I don't know, the crippling factor of Starfield is that there's just nothing here. And what there is of it, it's just so small. And I think that's what really just harms Starfield from being a really good game.
And even then, too, like that, that really applies to side quests as well. I think I can only recall maybe a, like, not even a handful. Like, probably not even five decent, uh, what's it called? Side quests in this game. Like, most of the side quests in this game are, hey, go kill this leader at this camp, or go blow up this ship in orbit. Or go mine this resource. Right? Either I got hit harder than I thought, or you've got some incredible timing. Regardless, I think it knows you're here. I'll unlock the door. Second floor, main building. But be quiet. This quest was actually really cool. I like this quest. It did actually really set up, uh... The kind of like tense moment. So what do we got here? It's too clean to be one of the settlers, or a pirate. You see on patrol, maybe? It'd make my day if you said you were a shock trooper out for a stroll. And it's just a shock trooper. Like you know what I mean? Like being able to be a shock trooper and fight like the the Free Star Collective. Like there's just. There's a lot of really cool concepts here, but they just don't do nothing with it, and it hurts, man, because we waited. Vanguard, huh? So many yeah. years for this game That's to come out, and just I'm for Hadrian. it to come out like this. A, I was a researcher with the UC. It hurts. Yeah, I came here on a rumor of a. Well, I expect what's left of the settlers, the work of Oxisio Machina. A terramorph. One of the nastiest aliens humanity's ever crossed paths with. And this one, well, it's something of an anomaly. Possibly a worrying one. But yeah, so like side quest too as well, which is like the bread and butter of Bethesda. It's just <laughs> they're just bad. <laughs> I, I can't even talk about it anymore because they're just so forgettable and just not worth even bringing up. I sure could. Because to confirm my suspicions about this creature, I'm going to need a tissue sample from it. And to get that... The admin terminal's here. But if you can make it to the secure... Good. Take care of yourself. And make sure you leave enough of that thing for us. Um... Well, like here, empty planets, randomly generated locations. We kind of already talked about that. Um, I do have points about here on loading screens. That's also another point that's been kind of talked to death as well. Um, and I mean, it's also fair on why it was talked to death because it is quite brutal that. I want to say, like, if you really tally up the, like, total playtime, uh, of your... Connection restored. Uh, I'll make this quick. Of your, uh, what's it called? Plants turns took a beating. Oh, your Starfield playthrough. I I'd probably say at least, like, 20% of it is you just looking at loading just screens. Get the thing to chase you down the Especially if you're on console. Buildings, and you'll lead it right into a crossfire. Oh, hello? I wish I'd found this earlier. You notice those sensors around the facility? Part of a livestock tracking system. Should let you keep tabs on how close the Terramorph is. But it's not connected to this network. There should be a terminal in the adjoining room. Tune it to 183. You know, even like things like Bethesda. Um. Uh, we like follow four where like they try mass loading screens and things like that in this game it's just there's a black black screen loading screen or even like 
if, if you, you've been noticing, like, as you've been watching, um, even, like, facing human enemies, they're worse. Um, Trackers reading green. Like in Fallout 4, Raiders would be taking cover. Uh, is Shit. Stop. Peeking Stop around corners and things like Pick that, right? Cover. In this game, they kind of just going. walk up to you and. One of the few Welcome. highlighted moments in this game. Seeing that for the first time was the really cool. They're set up but need power. There's breakers on each of the buildings you can throw to get them live. Once they're online, lead the terramorph towards the lights and watch the fireworks. I don't even need to do that because I'm also just Oh no! So you actually do get a skill point. That is good to know. Everyone kept telling me is that level 100 was the last time you got a skill point. Hmm. But yeah, so like this is like the real like only intelligent like alien life in this game, and it's, it's cool. And like this whole moment that just happened was a really cool moment the first time you've seen it. But again, like these moments are so small and far between that like it just doesn't really justify the playtime uh, but going back to uh, combat there briefly yeah like it's weird because like they took away the intelligence that enemies had in Fallout 4 but in this game they add you know more reactions right like if you shoot a guy in the leg they'll drop to their knees or if you shoot them in the arm they'll like fling their half their body to the side and stuff like that so there's a lot of really good reactions in that sense but the actual ai and uh pathfinding is just so bad compared to the previous entry so it's it's weird and uh yeah i, I just it's weird there's a lot of like you know two steps forward one step back with a lot of things, but then there's also weird things where they had they've done it right in previous entries. And then they just scrap it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just it's bizarre some of the choices they made. Trekker's gone quiet. I, wait. I'm not too proud. Thank you for saving my ass. You didn't happen to grab me a tissue. Here you go, man. All right. I spotted a microscope downstairs. I think really some of the last talking points I really do have, though about this game is uh, maybe just like the lore in general and just how Bethesda sets up some really interesting ideas, right? Like when you first encounter a Starborn, your mind is just racing, right? Like, oh, it's this alien life. And even Beth like characters at the Lodge propose a lot of these questions that you have, right? You're like, oh, cool. This I'm I can't wait to figure out what this is. And just find out that Starborn are just people who get to the anomaly first, like the Unity. Maybe a flag scan. And then you just teleport to a different galaxy and you're randomly giving new armor and a ship, which is never explained. This equipment, it's not set up to do a um, analysis of our sample. Who the created are, right? Who set up like who put all these temples around the galaxy? What is that cutscene? when you to touch a piece of the artifact, no one's right? Ever spread them. So when humans settle a world, 70 to 100 years later, Terram, Tal Seti, though, it's too... But then the other option, that someone... 
had seen, which means we're either looking. Terramorph outbreaks have taken. There is. Time was, but we also need to get. Luckily, what would you say? Yeah, I'd do it myself, but plus, clear it with your commander. You can even show them this. Oh, you don't know. I need doctor. I'm not sure. There's a place. And and here's also a, a good point it. as well to make. Not a. a Probably about half of your experience in Starfield is just going to be in very long-winded conversations. Obviously, I'm skipping these just because I've already played these quest lines before. But um, going back to what I was talking about with the lore and the setup in this game, is that they just set up so many cool things, but I don't know if they're trying to go for like how the Dwemer situation is, right? To have like this aura of mystery but it just ends up being lackluster because it's either one, find out what the Starborn are is just kind of disappointing, or they just never answer the question, right? Of who built the temples, who's this like, who are these creators or this like, you know, Reaper-esque or Prothean-esque uh, alien race, right? That's the only alien thing that we get in this game and it's not or nothing's done with it, right? So whether that they're <laughs> they're hoping to do a sequel to Starfield in, you know, 20, 30 years <laughs> after, you know, ES6 and Fallout 5. It's just it's just a disappointment, right? And let I mean, there is the shattered space or whatever the hell that DLC is called. Um coming out later this year. So it's possible that they tackle some of my criticisms with this DLC, but to be honest with you, I am not uh, holding my breath on that. Um, and really the last big thing is just to talk about outpost building, right? Um, that's kind of like the last pillar of the game that I haven't talked about yet. I actually need to, what I need to do, I just need to build a few more modules and I can, more, can build more stuff. I don't know if I'm actually going to put any points into this. I feel like I might do commerce or something with my perks. Well, it's good to know that like technically speaking, you can unlock every single perk, but even just gain to level 100 is a grind. But just to go on to the final point of my review talking about outpost management and building, it's it's really good. It's, they pretty much took Fallout 4 settlement system, but made it clean, made it sci-fi. You have different options and um, as you get more uh, perks into outpost management, like I just showed you, you gain more access to, you know, more options, right? To really personalize um, your outpost. And you don't even need to build an outpost. There's a few apartments you could get to as well that you could really fine craft and, uh, and tune. Making ship pads, like landing pads. Um, if you're too lazy to, uh, What's it called? Go to places to do bounty boards. You even build your own. Um, extractors, right? So when you find planets on resources, you can uh, set up extractors and start mine operations, right? You got your fuel, power, things like that. Storage, right? So when you're mining shit, um, you set your extractors to these uh, these storage, right? Fabrication, like you know, from the workshop DLCs, and yeah, like and you can make it your crafting and stuff like that. They even give you like an overhead view, which is really nice. And some of the stuff that you see coming out outpost builds, it's actually it's truly insane, right? It's just a it's a deeper version of what you've seen in uh, in Fallout Four. 
it is a bit more complicated. Um, then Fallout 4. Especially when you're coming to the points of setting up shipping lanes and how to transfer materials between um, between outposts. I do think in that regard, they made unnecessarily uh, complicated, right? Because in Fallout 4, which you grab the perk, um, and then you just cargo link, right? And then you would have the caravans go between your outposts. In this game, they made overly complicated, and it didn't need to be. It all it should have been was, you step a landing pad here, you step a landing pad there, link them. That's all it should have been. But they did this whole thing with you have to set up certain landing pads and those landing pads have that fuel. And it just made it. What the heck is going on here? I just wanted to show you guys my like what an outpost looks like. It's like weird. What is this? Get away from my mind, buttheads. So this also brings up the element too as well. If uh, once you start making big outposts, creatures start attacking it. Um, you'll have a clipped merch start to come to attack it. I don't know if anything's broken here. Integrity. Oh, this stuff's good. But you know what I need to do is I actually need to, um, I can actually, what I'm doing here is I actually do need more power for this. Um, and you're probably wondering why. So yeah, so right here. Actually, this is perfect. I can show you what I'm talking about exactly. So I have these extractors, right? And the thing about these extractors is, is you set them up. So this is like a patch right here. Um, actually, I think I could probably show you. Yeah. So this is an area where I can put, um, wait, can I put another one here? I, I can't even build it though. Um, I specifically set up this mine because this resource is like the one resource you need for leveling up weapons, right? And because it's a rare resource, you're not always guaranteed to see it um, pop up in vendors. So it's just easier to have these mines set up like this. And then you pretty much just drop by every so often. And look, there's, look at that, 84. Wow, I'll never need to, like, I'm good. <laughs> uh, what's my map? Oh, that's way too much. You know what? I'll put this back in here. <laughs> I don't need this much. Uh, now it's gonna go back up. Yeah, this stuff is really important to have for um, weapon crafting. Uh, you know what, actually, yeah, let's talk about... I keep saying I got the last thing I need to talk about, but... One more thing we'll do before I kind of wrap this up. First, I need to go buy some adhesive, though. Because, of course, it's not a Bethesda game unless you're, you know, in dire need of adhesive. Classic Fall Four struggles. <laughs> um. 
And to be honest with you, there's one thing that I actually can't talk about in this game because I never actually engage with it. And that's also kind of a problem in itself is um, spacesuit crafting and upgrades. I have found zero need to invest in that. Actually, what? Is it its own? Yeah. There's actually a whole perk tree dedicated to it. I literally have never had to touch it at all. Especially once you start getting better um, legendary suits and stuff like that, where it just reduces overall damage, whether it's uh, ballistic or laser and stuff like that. Or if you're like me and you're new game plus 10, like the armor that I have is some of the best armor in the game. Mind you, you can't add perks and things like that like you can if you uh, they were gonna give our son to use this uh, the spacesuit uh, workbench, but like it's just again, it's, it, it's not worth the four levels. I think your perks points are better spent somewhere else. I'm pleased to report that our stocks are currently being maintained at 90% or higher. I'm sure we have anything you might Let need. me talk to you! Welcome to UC Distribution. Oh, well... Do you have adhesive? Please tell me you have adhesive. You do not. Well, that is kind of a problem because... Right, right. Come back if you need something else. You know what, we'll just do the old wait method here briefly and see if this... I swear to god, I thought he had adhesive. If this doesn't work, then I'll just kind of show you guys a workbench. <laughs> and then kind of just show you instead of actually operating through what I do need adhesive. Because I was looking for that before I, uh, I started recording this video. Oh, here's another thing too. Why does it take 30 years to wait in this game compared to previous Bethesda games? Also, the fact that vendors have no cash still and no stock is also just really annoying. Like, why do you punish, like you have all these systems in place to make the game less fun to play, right? I know carry weight is more of a, a hot topic and I won't touch that, but in terms of like waiting for vendors, 24 hours, low credit counts and stuff like that, it's like, you know, players are just going to be waiting 24 hours. So why don't you just give vendors, you know, like a hundred thousand credits. I mean, your economy is already busted, right? Which I haven't talked about yet in this review, but the economy is busted. Oh. So I I don't know. It's just weird to show. Ah, oh, here we go. Perfect. So she did have adhesive. Uh, lubricant. Actually, I believe I need to. Uh, polymer. I think I have a lot of sealant. Oh, she actually did have. Okay, she normally doesn't like. So this is what I mean. Why I have that mind set up because not all the time will vendors have this right because it's a rare resource, but you need this pretty much in all um, high weapon crafting uh, Back blueprints. To it, then. So I just went. It's a privilege to be able to. I just went and found that planet for the sake of not have to wait for vendors to have it. So when I need to craft weapon upgrades, right, I can just quickly stop by on that planet and uh, call it a day, right? And look at these frame drops. Terrible. Terrible. That would be nice too as well. This game got an FPS boost, which will probably never happen either, but... People joke. I mean, I shouldn't even be saying an FPS boost if this game can't even maintain 30 frames consistently. Also, we're still waiting on that Fallout 4 next-gen update, uh, Bethesda, that you promised last year. 
Ah, it's probably gonna be launched right next to the Fallout show, most likely. That is one thing too that I'm debating if I'm going to 100% Fallout 76 is DLC. So I, I got the platinum for the base game, but there's some DLC achievements I have to do, and they're kind of grindy. But I don't think I'm gonna touch that game. Game sidetracked, anyways. Let's wrap up this this uh, this casual review. Yeah, so let's look at weapons. So this is another thing that's actually been really, really good, um, is in terms of just the different uh, options that you get, right? Is there something I want? Oh yeah, right here. As you can see, right, you need that tantalum or whatever. <laughs> I probably butchered that. Whatever that is. Um, for a lot of the perks that you need to upgrade uh, your weapons, you need that ore, right? So that's why I ended up setting up that mine, because now I have a lot of it. Um, Semi-automatic, burst fire. I think that's the most I can do with that. But as you can see from the names on my... on my weapons, I spent a lot of time... Uh, maximizing all my weapons right to do as much damage as possible hmm. I don't know if I really need I'll look into that in a second And they had that skin section, right, for uh, DLCs and like creation engines, stuff like that, most likely. Uh, anything I can put on this bad boy? Penetrate rounds. Oh, actually, I need to upgrade that magazine and battery mods 3. Hmm. Interesting. Air trigger. Oh, here we go. We'll put that on. That's the one cool reward too, as well, from the uh, the Freestar Ranger. Let's get this really nice skin for the uh, for the revolver. Here, I don't even know what the hell that is. But yeah, they have all these skins, right? But uh, or sections, but they don't have mods in place yeah right long barrel iron size but yeah you can see like it's you have it's pretty much just what you expected from fallout um from fallout 4 but just sci-fi long barrel i kind of don't like the way that looks i kind of like this stocker Entry rounds, yeah. Maybe I'll look into that. Bay room. Uh, oh, you know what? No, it's actually. I don't even know what the hell neon is. I already upgraded this. Okay. I'll put a. Oh, it's kind of ugly. Yeah, no, screw that. But as you can see, increase rate of fire damage. No, yeah, let's do that. I haven't really touched this weapon since. I have a lot of ammo for. It. You know what? That's actually. Not a break. Increase long range. in there. Put high powered on. Uh, no laser. 
But as you can see, yeah, like... Put that. I actually really like that hair trigger. I've had that on the revolver and I was just absolutely destroying people. Powered on there. So even though there's uh, a lot of options, it's clear that you should always go with armor piercing rounds and stuff like that, and high power, because other than that, you're kind of just not uh, maximizing your damage, right? But it's still a nice and welcome change. Did I even touch anything with this? Actually, that's true. I don't think I. Increase damage and damage range. I didn't really use the laser rifle too much this playthrough. Lasers do more damage than outburn of enemies. Uh, no mod. I need another magnet. Can I craft that's a good question. Can I craft that? Where is it? So yeah, this brings into the industrial workbench, right? So you can actually craft specific uh Uh you can craft specific parts, right? And if you level up that skill tree, because I believe it's uh Yeah, so you level up special projects here, and you could actually craft pretty much all the specific weapon parts that you need in the end if you want to play the game that way. Um, I find it's just easier just to go around to different vendors and then just save the... Uh, <laughs> and save the... Uh, the money, right? Because, for example, like I don't have anything in that skill tree, and... Look, look how much difference in the damage it is, right? Amplifier. So it looks like I actually still do some more... I can still do some more work on this weapon, but even then, like, I just did a lot of work to this too as well, so... Yeah, lots of fun, just kind of, like, maxing out your damage of weapons and things like that. I think I... I touch this weapon. This is also a really good weapon too, as well. I like. What do you mean? Oh, actually, I don't. Ah, perfect. So I could jump this one up to five sixteen, eh? Need another magnet. So as you can see from like all the crafting and stuff like that, there is a lot of good mechanics here, but sadly, you don't really need them. I wonder if I should even bother. touched uh, the grenade launcher to be honest with you this whole time but right like you have pharmaceutical labs here you have like like you know what i mean like you have all these mechanics like all these components right 
all these systems, but they're they're redundant, right? Like you don't need to cook in this game or anything like that. But you know what made all these mechanics awesome and important was in Fallout 4 when they introduced um, the survival mode, which I'm actually kind of blown away that they didn't launch this game with it. Um, apparently they're looking into it perhaps because they they talked about it in interviews before launch. But like, if you add a survival mode in this game, a lot of this stuff really does come into play, right? Because I remember in Fallout 4, I never used to cook things. But when you played survival mode, you were cooking specific items that were huge boons for your survivability, right? Especially, like, I had such a blast playing the game uh, permadeath survival mode. Like, I feel like this game would only benefit from it. So... Hopefully, uh, hopefully that's something that they look at doing in the future. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think that's all I really want to talk about. In this, uh, in this review. I think uh, we've kind of hit the points that I wanted to hit. We've also ran a little bit longer than uh, I intended to, but um, you know, if you stayed around this whole time, you know, having the background, listen to what I was talking about, what we were talking about, you know, it's it's much appreciated. I kind of like, like I said before, the, this more casual uh, podcast style um, reviews and. You know, just like the long story short is that Starfield is not a bad game, especially if it's a game that you play on its own terms. Because uh, if you come in and you're like, you know, I want this to be a space exploration game like um, No Man's Sky or Star Citizen and stuff like that, and you want this open endedness, unfortunately, you're not going to get that with this game. There's just there's too many restrictions that really punish that, right? And really hamper exploration because yeah, the planets are barren. It's just prefab locations scattered throughout on a, a small randomly generated map and that's your exploration, right? You can't just fly around everywhere in your ship like No Man's Sky. It's pretty much just used as a, a fast travel <laughs> device. Um, though the combat is fun and stuff like that, there's just not enough handcrafted content in this game to really just justify the playtime, right? Like, I have eight days in this game. A lot of that was just grinding out to get the level 100 trophy, right? To get, uh... To get to New Game Plus 10. And I can tell you right now, I did not enjoy <laughs> all those hours. Like, I could definitely say, like, I did with Fallout 4, Oblivion, and stuff like that, where, like, yes, there, I do have problems with previous Bethesda games, but there's just so much more pauses than negatives like it was never really an issue right but this is the first game that bethesda has released where like it's just it's mostly negative right like even fallout i'm probably gonna get grilled for this but even fallout 76 at least had a core that you can say okay if this game didn't launch completely buggy and broken and the online service fried, you could put time into this and have fun, right? And I did play Fallout 76 and I did enjoy, especially now with the, like if you picked up Fallout 76 today, you could have fun with that game, you know, for, you know, 20, 30, 40 hours, right? And then put it down, right? And there's people who play that game for, they've been playing the game for years. I personally can't because I think there's kind of like a, a hard, drop off in content right once you do everything right because then it's just, it just turns into grinding for resources and completing scoreboards and doing dailies and stuff like that and i don't find that very enjoyable but like just doing the quests that are in the game and the, and the content that's in the base game itself yeah like you can pick up 76 and actually have a good time playing that starfield i find a lot of it's just weighing around talking to people with short bursts of gameplay sprinkled in between and it's it's disappointing it's definitely disappointing but that being said it's not 
a horrible game like people make it out to be. If I had to go using, you know, like an actual 1 to 10 scale, like a proper 1 to 10 scale where 5 is average, 10 is game of the year, a perfect game, and 1, you know, being the absolute worst, you know, a game like Gollum. Um, I think I got to score this game like a 5, 5.5 out of 10. It is painfully average. Um, and even like... And I think that's almost being generous because there's a lot of negatives in this game that just almost makes me want to say it's a below average. But I think there's enough intrigue, there's enough components in this game that kind of bring it up to that to that average score, right? Like I said, like the shipbuilding and the outpost management. Um the gunplay and things like that are pretty good, but it's just after so many years, right? It's after so many years, what can Bethesda do right with a new IP and this is what we get? Because <laughs> now, like, it's going to be another four or five years, right, for Elder Scrolls Six. So we're talking, you know, 2028, 2029, probably for ES6 and then you're talking mid 2030s for Fallout 5 <laughs> and then if they're doing like I said before if you're talking like a Starfield 2 you're talking 2040s <laughs> right and it's once you throw that new IP in the mix right it just it expands the, the, the wait time for uh, for everything and I thought the wait time between Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4 was bad but it's just it's just going to keep getting worse, right? And and that's mainly due to Bethesda's refusal to give out their property to anyone else again. Like what they did with uh, Obsidian and Fallout New Vegas, right? And the crazy thing is, is that Obsidian and Fallout are under the same... They're under the same branch now, right, with Xbox. So like, it wouldn't be too crazy for them, like, yeah, yeah, make another, uh, make another Fallout spin-off game while we wait for Bethesda. But I think, uh, I think Todd and them just don't want to get out outclassed again. So it's, uh, it, it sucks. So after this game, man, it's it's gonna be a long haul, and I don't really expect to touch this game again now until, uh. Until the DLC comes out, which is probably going to be later this year, and who knows? Yeah, so I have eight days on the save profile. Like, who knows if this is just going to be like a one and done DLC type game, or if they're going to do you know numerous DLC packs, like with like how they did with Fallout Three or Fallout New Vegas. We'll have to wait and see. But even then, like uh, maybe mods help fix this game when they release the creation engine to the people they they're bringing back creations they're they're bringing back paid mods they really want paid mods to be a thing um they just launched that program again with skyrim here i think uh late last year um because i guess the creation club wasn't uh booming as much as much as they like so <laughs> they rebranded to creations which again is pretty much just like mods. I don't know if you guys remember how bad the Steam Workshop mods were, where people were charging like you know like a hundred or a thousand dollars for a golden apple in Skyrim, and people were just stealing other people's mods and shit. Like it was it was horrible. Um, so again, now they're trying a more regulated approach. So we'll see how that goes for um, Starfield because they said early this year actually for uh, for creation for for Starfield, but. Yeah, it's just, I got the 100% in Starfield. Kind of wish I didn't do it. It's, uh, it's definitely some of the most grindy achievements that Bethesda's ever done, right? Like, the organic resource was just an absolute grind fest because this is, this wasn't, this doesn't count to, like, all the animals you killed. This is only plants. So that meant running around on a bunch of planets, <laughs> gathering plants. 
And that is why that's at 45%. 0.45%. More people have reached level 100 than have gathered plants in this game because it's so pointless and tedious and boring. Um, <laughs> do I regret? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Like I, I, I want to say I regret doing this. Um... But I just couldn't leave it at the 99%, you know what I mean? Like, I just had to just clean it up, the 100, the level 100. So now I've done it. Um, do I recommend doing it? No. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think there are way better games to play. And especially 2024 just being a banger of a year. With like Hell Divers, Final Fantasy, Dragon's Dogma, like I think there's just so many better games to be playing. Um, but I'm glad to be done with this. Like I said, uh, I wasn't even gonna play this game again. Like I played through the main quest and got to like level 40, I think, and then just left it at that. So that's pretty bad for a Bethesda game to be a one and done. And actually, not even just to play through once to actually forget about it. Like, a few months afterwards, I actually forgot about Starfield until it popped up in my Twitter feed. Like, that's insane. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end, end my thoughts on, <laughs> on that. It's, uh, it's a disappointment. But, if you made it all the way to the end of this video again thank you from the bottom of my heart i love doing this as a side little gig um sorry that uploads have been so sporadic and streams have been like non-existent i just moved into my new house getting settled in working lots and stuff like that so i do actually have a camera i think i might be setting that up maybe later today i'm gonna look at that possibly and uh getting streams back up and running because that would be a lot of fun to start streaming again on the regular but on that note you guys thank you again you guys are the best take care and i will see you guys on the next one